Hi everyone, this is just a quick tutorial on how to navigate Wisconsin's Department of Health Services COVID database. So this is a service that the state conducts and uh, makes public access to in the interest of transparency and also to allow other scientists and healthcare providers to have access to this data. And it's really kind of cool and amazing. So I'm going to show you how it works. So when you go to the website that is pasted in Canvas, it's going to bring up all of the data for all of the counties in the state. And we're going to want to get more specific than that. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on filter data. So it's that kind of triangular thing that's supposed to look like some type of a filter. I think it looks more like a funnel, right? Um, so you're going to click on that. And when you do, it's going to open up this panel on the left of the different things that you can filter by. So what we're going to pick is the name of the county and the, the designation for that is geo name. So you're going to click on that. That's going to open up a text box and you can go ahead and type in done. And when you do, it's going to kind of bring up, you can see in blue underneath done county, you have to click on that. You can't just type in done and hit enter. You have to click on that blue done county. Oh, there it is. All right, so now you can see it's sorted by Dunn County only, but it's totally random, the order that these different rows are displayed. So you can see, you know, the first couple of rows are from April of 2020, and then I see some August and September 2021. So we're going to want to sort this by date. So you're going to go ahead and click on, this stands for reported date. Now the reported date right now in Wisconsin is two days after the actual date that the case or the hospitalization or the death occurred. And that gives them the opportunity to make sure that the data is accurate and correct. So for example, sometimes if someone in Dunn County gets diagnosed with COVID, but maybe they've already gone home to their parents' house, let's say they're a college student and now they're in Bloomington, well, then that case gets transferred to the Minnesota County and it no longer counts as a Dunn County case. So there's adjustments that need to be made um, when people kind of move around or perhaps somebody got tested at Mayo in Dunn County, but they actually live in a different, in Barron County. Uh, so there's all that kind of stuff that has to happen. So there's a two day delay. So anyway, you're going to go ahead and click on reported date. When you click on that the first time, it's going to put you in chronologic order from the beginning of the pandemic. So what we're going to do instead is then click on it a second time, and then that's going to give you reverse chronologic order. So starting with the most recent date for which there is um, data reported, and that's going to be the best view for you to do the worksheet today. So once you have this view, I'm going to point out what a few of these columns mean. There are dozens of columns here, and uh, so we're not going to look at all of them, although I encourage you to on your own time. Uh, the, the biggest one we're going to look at is this column here. So positive, cumulative, confirmed, and probable cases. So for the purposes of COVID-19, a confirmed case is someone who had a PCR test that was positive. A probable case is someone who had an antigen test that was positive, so like those rapid tests that you could get at Stout, and either had symptoms that were consistent with COVID-19 or were a close contact of someone who had COVID-19. So even though that isn't quite it is accurate a test as a PCR test in that context, we say that is a probable case and we count it as a case. So that's what we're looking at here is positive, confirmed, and probable cases cumulative since the beginning of the pandemic. So you can see as of reported date of December 29th, there were over 9,500 officially diagnosed COVID-19 cases. This column over here is the cumulative deaths due to COVID-19. So these are not just people who died and happened to be COVID positive. These are people who died from COVID, uh, who had either confirmed or probable cases. Uh, usually in the case of a death, that was uh, confirmed. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that column also. In between those two, you can see that uh, the daily count of new cases, so that positive, new, confirmed, and probable, that's new cases diagnosed per day. And you'll see as you scroll through here that some days are much higher than other days. A lot of that has to do with when testing sites are open 
when data gets reported. You'll see here for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, no cases were reported. That doesn't necessarily mean no cases were diagnosed, but um, nobody was working in the county health department, right? So nobody posted that information. So around the holidays, we always see things get a little strange. Um, on weekends, you'll see there are lower numbers as well. So the column right next to that is the seven day average. So that kind of allows us to compensate and kind of smooth out that day-to-day -day variation based on weekdays, holidays, those types of things. And we can get kind of a better sense of what's going on over time. The other column that you're gonna look at, you're gonna scroll all the way to the right. And if you do that, you're going to find another column here towards the end, which is hospitalization. So these are people who are hospitalized for COVID-19 infection, not with, but for, and um, how many people cumulatively over the course of the pandemic since we've started keeping data. So the health department is able to amass this data because COVID-19 is what we call a reportable disease. So certain diseases and conditions are reportable diseases, which means that if a clinician or a laboratory or a doctor's office or a hospital diagnoses somebody with that infection, they have to notify the health department. And there's this whole way that we do that electronically um, so that the health department then can keep data on these particular infections. We only do this for certain infections that have have a public health importance, right? So COVID-19 obviously does. We do it for things like chlamydia. Uh, we do it for HIV. Uh, Ebola is one that is reportable, but we don't report things like strep throat, right? Things that are not really a public health concern. Uh, so that's the we have this ability to track diseases that are of importance from a public health standpoint. So those are the three columns that you're going to need to uh, complete the worksheet. Let me know if you have any questions or if you run into any issues. And uh, have fun exploring the data. All right, I'll talk to you soon.